All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. So what we're looking at is a continuation on a couple different levels. Uh, <laughs> I've been caught up with redesigning and repurposing a bunch of different past stuff. Uh, I was going to do a economical uh, three-gun build, and then I was going to do a badass three-gun build. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do my economical version of a three-gun build, which is basically this guy right here. Uh, this is the Moar, which is actually turned into one of the most spectacular three-gun rifles ever. Uh, and for that reason, I don't want to touch it too much, with exception of uh, I want to, I am taking the trigger out of my ultra-match Rainier Arms, and I'm putting the uh, the Trigger Tech Diamond in. But I'm going to migrate the all the the, the hyperfire trigger into this rifle so that I got two two different uh let's just say three gun rifles and one's going to be like probably real high, I would say high end is you'll probably want to get and then this one is going to utilize some additional parts all right blah 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 get to the chase John so anyway I've got this aero precision rail because I'm using the M4E upper and the M4E lower on this thing. I wanted something that matched a little bit more. So what does that mean? We will be replacing my handguard that I put on this thing as part of the Moar build. And this is like a $43 handguard that I've taken and I put skateboard tape on it. As you can see, this thing's been through probably uh, five or six three-gun events and on a day-to-day -day basis shooting out at the range on multiple occasions. It's held up pretty good. But I wanted something that's going to match the uh, the aero precision stuff that you see here. So let's go ahead and take this thing out and take a good, quick look at it. I've been really impressed with aero precision uh, materials and equipment. And then next week, we're going to go ahead, and I've got the stuff coming in. I got sick and tired of waiting on people. I went ahead and ordered it last night. Uh, we're going to go with pre proof research. Uh, Midwest Industries on a couple things and, and, and a lot of neat stuff that's coming in. So in any case, let's go ahead and pop this on and we're going to put it on this rifle. So first thing we're going to do is take this thing out of the box. Get it out of the box. Uh, I just want you to look at that. Look at that workmanship. That is a very nice handguard. Um, one of the things also, we got a, a new... Uh, DMR rifle that's coming, but one of the things I don't want to do on my DMR rifles is I'm trying to keep my handguard short and off of the gas block, and I was thinking about building an all brand new DMR gun, but since I have taken my Criterion barrel out and we've developed a load specific to that thing and we're still in development, I probably won't touch it. This is, a, you know, let's just face it, this is not so much a review on this guy, but as much as it is a vlog on the process, but I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in here so you can see the details on this thing. Uh, I've, I looked up a lot of different reviews, and there's not a lot of information out there. Here we go. I'm bringing the camera in. There you go. I like these type of, of handguards where they've got the pick rails on the front and the rear. That gives me the availability to extend out a little bit here if I need to, as well as any backup iron sights that may be required for that specific match. I also dig the knurling on the top of it. It's kind of like a ridge line. This whole thing is really nice. We've got QD attachment points here on the bottom and on the right and left side. Basically, you've got uh, M-lock style attachment points here as well as on the bottom and on the side. This makes it important if you want to put an air socket rail, it'll go ahead and bring it up. You can put a light on that if you want to, but this is actually really, really cool. I'm excited about putting this thing. I've had this thing for a couple weeks. It was on sale and I don't want to tell anybody because I don't want anybody to buy them, <laughs> but I will. All right, so <laughs> this thing was on sale over at Primary Arms, and I didn't want to tell anybody about it before I got it because I actually had to buy the thing. And uh, you can find that link if you go to kb32tac.com. It'll take you straight over there, $127 for that rail. And because this is a mid-range build, and we're not talking about a Geisley or we're not talking about a Lancer where you're spending $350 to $250, this was ideal. It's going to give me the length and the reach that I want as I had on my last rifle. And uh, 
that's what I needed. So in any case, along with that, you now be careful when you're ordering anything from Air Precision because some of these guys do not come with the barrel nut and it'll say does not come with barrel nut. So you got some shims here because I believe, well, no, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, here's a screw for something. Here is a uh, barrel nut wrench. I hate it when they, I hate it when they do that, because then you got to go get your big old fat wrench. Uh, here's a, a Gorse Air Precision. Uh, I got Torx head thing. Uh, here's your key locks here that fit on there. So let's go ahead real quickly. I want to weigh this out. Uh, the total package for this thing. I've had cheap rails weigh in at like 12 ounces. Let's see what this guy comes in at. 12.3 ounces, and then we got to add the rest of the stuff that's on there. So basically, you're looking at just a tad under 13 ounces, uh, 12 point, and just give it a break for the plastic on there, about 12.6 ounces. Not bad. Uh, not, I mean, I think that pretty much that's going to be your average is around 12 ounces. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, according to, uh, what do you call that, YouTube rules and regulations, I, uh, I'm probably going to hold off from showing you the install on this thing, but we will do a before and after on it. It should be pretty cool. Here we go. All right, so let's just say this. I had a, a crush washer get stuck on there, and I had to cut it off, so that was not a whole lot of fun. But I was able in the process to go ahead and clean up this uh, Wilson Combat Barrel. Now, you know what's interesting is I sit here and I'm going, I'm going to build a mid-range uh, three-gun. This is actually my real three-gun, three-gun gun. Uh, the one that I'm hoping that I'm getting ready to build, I'm, I'm pretty much hoping that it turns out a little better. But in any case, we got that off. Now, here is the uh, rail that I took off. And again, this is one of those... Uh, I don't know, $43 <laughs> rails that I got off of Amazon. The only thing that, uh, uh, not Amazon, but e the only thing that was a little disappointing about these rails is the anodization is uh, uh, pretty cheap. So it uh, didn't really last, and that's a couple coats of paint on there. But, you know, if you're going to put the, 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 the grip tape like I do on these things, I'm not going to buy an expensive uh, handguard simply from the fact that I'm going to destroy it anyway. So anyway, let's uh, real quickly, the uh, the weight of this guy right now. Oh, that's grams. Oh, no, it's not grams. Let's go pounds and ounces. It's 13.5 ounces. So I'm, I'm actually losing an ounce, but you got the paper on there, which is probably an ounce anyway. Cause, but uh, not a bad handrail. I'll, I'll probably put this on something down the road, but you can see where the anodization and the paint and all is worn off but all together this was a uh, this really works well okay so let's go ahead and put this guy in. all right so we got the barrel nut installed as you can see right there and i went ahead and reapplied the gas block back in the same holes i took the opportunity to go ahead and polish up the uh the barrel a little bit had some scratches on there and uh, we did have an issue getting the, uh, what do you call that thing, the uh, crush washer back off, but we were able to get it off. So let's go ahead with the reassembly process. I'm gonna make sure that alignment looks good. It does. Everything appears to be in working order. And I did, I took the opportunity to clean that chamber out a little bit. Look at that thing. There you go. It's always a good opportunity while you're doing things like this to uh, tear a rifle all the way down and just do a good inspection on it. I've been through two or three uh, three guns with this thing, probably a couple thousand rounds, but this is by far one of my most successful rifles as far as going from 100 to out to 700, no issues at all. So let's go ahead and put this thing on and see how it looks. Bam, wow, isn't that pretty? That is looking good. All right, all right, well, there it is and all its beauty uh the atlas rail and what a pain in the ass it was to put that thing on not necessarily because of uh the rail itself but because well i didn't know exactly how in the world we were supposed to do this thing and 
uh, the shims and the alignment. I thought that the barrel nut had to be aligned a specific way, but it didn't. But in any case, that's it. I'm really looking forward to uh, shooting this thing. Uh, we're going to be taking it out this week, I think, and uh, shooting up some uh, AR500 plates inside of a plate carrier. But that's it. Guys, that's the Atlas Rail S1. Now, this is the 15-inch uh, length right here, 16-inch barrel. That's a Wilson Combat. And it was a good opportunity for me to get everything cleaned up. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together, put the uh, front sight on it. And this is going to now turn into my backup three-gun. Well, hold on. Ah, there we go. Well, what do you think? It's a good-looking rifle. Go to Boy32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. God knows I've worked for it. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. It's free. It's not free. I'll get an airborne arms. Little triggers. Shoe in there. That thing's bad. I'm digging it. Go to Boy32. I am out.